Okay, so as we move from um, right triangle trigonometry to trigonometry on what we call the unit circle, um, we need to talk about um, angles and where they are located. Now, hopefully you know that there are a total of 360 degrees in a full circle. Um, so as we look with our x and our y axis here, um, this is quadrant one is what that's standing for. All the angles between zero and 90 degrees, their terminal side, Okay, so when you open an angle, you have your initial side, which when we're working on the circle, um, it always is going to start right here on the x-axis. And then your terminal side is where your angle ends. Okay, so it opens up. This would be the terminal side here for this angle. Um, now notice positive angles, we open to the left. So we'd start at the x-axis and open to the left. If it's a negative angle, we would start at the x-axis and open downward instead okay so we go down around this way we would start here go down this direction all right so um, what this picture from your text is showing is that in quadrant one that would be all of your angles between 0 and 90 degrees for example if I had an angle that stopped about here that's about a 45 degree angle formed here um, when it gets straight up and down Notice that forms a right angle with our x-axis, so that's a 90 degree angle. Um, as we continue on, each section is made up of 90 degrees, so this next section would be everything between 90 and 180 degrees. As we continue around the circle, um, our quadrant 3 goes from 180 to 270 degrees. Um, for example, if I had an angle whose terminal side was about here, um, notice it, we are assuming it opens from the x-axis, so it's open this direction. Okay, so that would be an angle measure somewhere between um, 180 and 270. I'd say about uh, 210 or 215. Okay, um, and then our fourth quadrant is everything between 270 and 360. And notice if we come all the way around to 360, we're back where we started. Um, Okay, so that is, those are angles opening in the positive direction. Um, we also can open the opposite direction, okay, uh, and that indicates that we have a negative angle. Okay, so if instead we opened 45 degrees this direction, okay, and stopped here, that is a negative 45 degrees. It's also, notice its terminal side also ends the same place as, if I take 360 minus 45, we get 315. So it's the same angle as if I open the positive direction and get a positive 315 degrees. Okay, so you want to keep this in mind as we begin moving through talking more about angles, about where each angle would be located. Alright, All right. so in which quadrant or on which axis would this angle lie? So we want to keep in mind, notice quadrant 1 is between 0 and 90. This is a positive angle, so we know it's going to open this direction counterclockwise. Um, angles between 90 and 180 would be in this quadrant. Anything between 180 and 270 would end in this quadrant. Anything between 270 and 360 degrees, our full circle would be here. Now, 311, notice it's going to open. It's going to. It's bigger than 90. It's bigger than 180. It's bigger than 270. It would end probably about here. It's between 270 and 360. So it is located in quadrant four. So it's important that you know <laughs> where your quadrants are. This is quadrant one and then two, three, and the last quadrant is four. Okay. In which quadrant does negative 311 lie? Okay, well, negative 311 means it opens downward. Okay, so it would go, this is 90 degrees, that's 180 degrees, this is 200 and negative 270, so negative 311 goes the opposite direction, which leaves it ending in the first quadrant. Okay, so you may want to label, if you have this in your notes, you may want to label this is 
negative 90, this is negative 180, this marker is negative 270, and this is negative 360. All right, in which quadrant or on which axis does 645 degree angle lie? And when it says lie, where would its terminal side be? Now, notice 645 is bigger than one full circle. It's more than the 360 degrees we have in a full circle. Um, so when you have something larger than that, there's two options here. One is to take the number and subtract 360 from that because that would be subtracting one full circle and then we can go the rest of the way. Now if you get a number that's still larger than 360 you could continue to subtract 360 degrees from that. Um, so that's one option. So I get 285 and what that does for me is it tells me this is positive 645 so I went a full 360 that's the 360 that I subtracted and then I continue going for another 285 degrees after that so there's 90 more there's 180 more, there's 270 more, 285 would probably end up about here. So notice it made one full circle, that was our 360 that we subtracted out, and then went 285 more. So it is ending in the fourth quadrant. All right, where does negative 90 lie? Now, negative 90, remember, we're, means we're opening 90 degrees, but in the clockwise direction. So we're opening downward 90 degrees, puts me right here. This would be negative 90 degrees. It is on the, it's not in a quadrant, it's on an axis. Specifically, notice it's located on the y-axis. Right, where would 1,246 degrees lie? Now that one is pretty large. You can go ahead and do this method where you take and subtract 360 until you get down to where you have a number less than 360. Okay, so I'll show you both, kind of both methods you can work through this. So notice 886 is still bigger than 360. So I'm going to, and what I'm doing is I'm taking out the full circles. Okay, so 526 is still bigger than 360. So I subtract 360 one more time, and I'm left with 166. So what that tells me is I'm opening the positive direction. I'm, I'm going one, two, three full circles, and then 166 degrees more. So my angle would start here and go one, two, three full circles and then 166 degrees so from here 166 more degrees would put me about here it would be between 90 and 180 so that puts me in quadrant two okay so that's one method that people use is just subtracting 360 till you get a number smaller so you know how far to go on your final journey um, the other option is to take that 1246 Divide it by 360 so you know how many times you're going around. And you get um, 3.46. So that tells me I go three full times. Okay, So that tells you how much to subtract out. Okay, And so if you suppose I, I know I'm going three times, so then I take 360 times three to find out how many degrees those three full times would take out. That's 1,080. And then subtract that from the 246. So I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm subtracting um, anything I can till I get down to something less than 360 so I know what to do on my little last jaunt there. You get the same answer. These are two options. Again, you can divide to find out how many full times then subtract that amount from your angle, um, or you can just subtract 360 at a time until you get down to a number that's smaller than 360. Okay, 
Finally, where would the angle negative 540 degrees lie? Now negative tells me I'm going to open this direction. I'm going to open downward for my x-axis. Um, but notice 540, that's more than our full circle. It's more than 360. So I'm going to find out how much more it is than 360. So I'm just going to go ahead and take 540 minus 360. That gives me 180 left over. Okay, so I know I'm going to go one full circle downward, and then I'm going to continue 180 more degrees, which puts me right at 180 here. Okay, so um, where am I located? I'm not in a quadrant. I'm actually on an axis, specifically the x-axis this time. Okay, so that is kind of finding where angles are located, and that will come in handy as we move along in the course.